any of these you want me to go over now is your chance to ask which ones from the homework that you were wondering about. I think I should be able to fit in a homework check later on today. At least that's the plan, Sam. I hope, I hope, I hope. It all went swimmingly? Really? Well, that's cool. Excellent. That makes things way easier. Then let's go right to lesson six, which I don't think is going to go as swimmingly, but we're going to find out. To me, this is kind of a uh, sort of a uh, reasonably kind of a uh, tough topic. Okay. And what I'd like you to do once you're on lesson six is I'd like you to put your pencils down, but put your eyes and your brains up. What we're going to do is we're going to look for a pattern. Here's the pattern. Okay. Let's suppose I have, let's see, insert table. Sure, why not? And let's do kind of about like that. Sure, that'll work. So let's suppose we have a rectangle. Rectangle. And what I'm going to look at is the original size, the area. I'm going to add a linear scale factor. Can I fit this all on one page? New size, new area, area scale factor. Hey there, that'll work on one page. What's the area of a rectangle? How do I find it? Come on, you remember this. This has been like, I think, grade 6 or grade 5. How do I find the area of a rectangle? Marcus, length times width. Okay, Area of a rectangle is length times width. So suppose my original rectangle is 2 by 8. This is meant to be obvious. What's its area? Come on. What's its area? 16. Yes? 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 Because you're like, it's really hard to figure out. Are you going to be okay? I'm a little worried if Jordan was to do that, you'd be like, whack, straight down. You're going to be all right? You sure? Okay. 16. I'm going to add a linear scale factor, and my linear scale factor is going to be 1 to 2. We're going to double everything. If I double everything, my new sizes are going to be 4 by 16. I doubled the 4 and I doubled the 8. So far, so good. What's my new area? 64. Here's what I want you to notice. When I doubled, when I doubled, when I doubled the length and the width, did the area get twice as big? How many times bigger is my area? Jordan. The area scale factor ended up being 1 to 4. Where did that 4 come from? Hold that thought. Let's suppose, Jeremiah, I had another rectangle. I'm picking a rectangle because it's about the easiest shape out there, but this actually works for any shape with area. So uh, let's suppose I had a, what did I do, a 2 by 8? Three by seven rectangle, which has an area mat of what? Thank you for doing that in your head. There is hope for this generation. I'm going to give you a linear scale factor. The scale factor this time is going to be one to three. We're going to triple this length and triple the width, which instead of three by seven is going to give me triple nine by uh, 21. Mm, 21. What's the new area? If you need a calculator, now's the time to get it out. Hundred and eighty. Sounds good. What's the area scale factor here? Is it three times bigger? I'll tell you right now. It's not. How many times bigger? Well, to figure that out, to figure out the area scale factor, go new area divided by original area. What do you get? Nine times bigger. 
Or we would say this, 1 to 9 area scale factor. Not 3 times bigger, 9 times bigger. Anybody spot a pattern yet? Let's see. Supposing, supposing, supposing I made up a, what, 5 you say? Sure. 5 by 3 you say? Sure. 3 rectangle, which has an area of, oh, help me out, Aaron. Woohoo! See, this is, you get that right, it's good. And supposing I did a linear scale factor of 1 to 4, I made it 4 times bigger. So that's going to make my rectangle, uh, instead of 5, 20 by, and instead of 3, 12, yes? What's the new area, length times width? 240? What do you think the scale factor is going to be? You said you spotted a pattern. Take a guess. What do you think the area scale factor is going to be? Okay, he's not confident enough. He's going to check. So he's going to go new area divided by old area. And what do you get? I know. You get 16. This is actually a one. Was your hypothesis correct? Okay, so we're going to find out. I'm not going to fill in all the numbers. I'm only going to fill in my... Hang on while I answer the phone. Sorry for the interruption, those of you watching at home. You ready? Marcus thinks he spotted the pattern. Let's suppose I told you that the scale factor was 1 to 5. The linear scale factor was 1 to 5. What do you think the area scale factor would be, Martin? Marcus. Marcus, sorry. How'd you get that? Hang on. Hold on. Uh, what if the scale factor was... 1 to 9. What if I made the length 9 times bigger and the width 9 times bigger? How many times bigger would my area be, Marcus? What's he doing? There's a fancy word for it, and you can use a math word, and it's also a shape. It's not square rooting. Squaring. Square rooting going backwards. So it turns out, it turns out that the relationship between Scale and area is not one-to-one, -one, it's one-to-squared, which is kind of easy to remember because, honestly, this is how I remember, area squaria, which is stupid, but it works for me. Okay? you got to come up with something. So let's make some educated guesses here. Um, what if we had a scale factor of 1 to 15? How many times larger will your area be? 1, 2, Yes, you might need to do your calculate unless you have your squares memorized. Hang on, hang on. We'll pause the video. Then know what 15 squared is? Yeah. Did you know that or did you know that? Eh, okay. That's a, still, smarter than half of them. They just sat there drilling. Uh, it, it also works in the other direction. What if my scale factor was 1? Now, this one I'm going to have to write by hand. What if my scale factor was 1 to 1 half? 1 to 0.5. We're getting smaller. The area scale factor would be 1, 2. How do you square a fraction? It's easy. You square the top over, you square the bottom. What's 1 squared in your head, please? What's 2 squared? It's going to be 1 quarter as big, or 1 fourth the size, or divide by 4. If I have 1, and I'm making everything 2 thirds as large, I'm shrinking it. It's a reduction. You know what my area scale factor is going to be? What's 2 squared? What's 3 squared? The scale factor is going to be 4 ninths. Spot the pattern? Pick up your pencils. It wants us to walk through the same thing here. And we will because it's worth writing down in our notes. But writing it a second time, hopefully it will make way more sense than doing this cold turkey. 
they're, they're doing this kind of a little less organized, I think. So it says, what we want to investigate is the relationship between linear scale factor and area scale factor. Here's our, it says, complete the following table. Our original rectangle is 3 by 5, which has an area of 15. If we have a 2 to 1, you know what? I just realized I wrote these scale factors in the wrong way. They want the big number to come first. So this example, this lovely example that I just did with you here, I was writing the scale factors backwards according to the way the textbook wants. I should have written this as a 2 to 1, as a 3 to 1, as a 4 to 1, as a 5 to 1. But that's okay. We'll do it properly in our notes. It's not the end of the world. I always get those mixed up. 2 to 1 or, or a scale factor of 2, a linear scale factor. 6 by 10 becomes 60. The new area divided by the original area is 4 over 1, scale factor of 4. Are you ready? 9 by 6. First of all, what's the area of a 9 by 6 rectangle? You guys know the 9 times table trick with your hands, right? Right? Somebody shaking your heads? Oh, man. Got to pause the video again. So, 54. We're going to have a 1 to 3, a 1 third reduction. A 1 third reduction. A 1 third reduction multiplying by 1 third is the same as dividing by... Multiplying by 1 third is the same as dividing by 3. Not dividing by a third. That's very different. Multiplying by 1 third is not the same as dividing by a third. It's saying take a third of your original size, reduce it by a factor of one third. Uh, that's the same as dividing by three. In other words, it's going to be three by two. Yes? And the new area is going to be what, Shay? I caught you zoning out. I know. The new area is going to be what? New area. First, we're not there yet. New area is going to be, what am I going to put here? Yeah, very good. And the new area, which is 6, divided by the old area, which is 54. And yes, Shay, you jumped to the punchline. It turns out to be a 1, of, one over 9 reduction. Okay, now we're getting a little trickier. 4 by 8, that's 32. How do I do this? Put your pencils down, look up. This is a scale factor. The word factor comes from when you multiply things together. If two numbers are multiplied together, we say those are factors. The answer is called the product. The way we found one third, Jeremiah, was we divided by three. I said multiplying by one third is the same as dividing by three. In fact, it's the same as timesing by 1 and dividing by 3. If they give you a fraction, the rule is multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. Can you remember that you divide by the bottom? Doesn't that horizontal line mean divided by anyways? So if I want to find my new dimension, the 4 is going to be... There we go. 4, it's going to be times by... 3 divided by 2. That's a 3 over 2 scale factor. The new width is going to be 6. And following a 3 to 2 scale factor, or a 1.5 scale factor as a decimal, uh, it's going to be 8 times 3 divided by 2. 12. I see I got that okay what's the new area kiddo six times 12 yes use your calculator or do it in your head did you say 72 did you do that here you guys are good someone taught you some mental arithmetic now stop let's make our I'm gonna make a prediction you guys don't have to write this down just in case we're wrong What's our scale factor for the area going to be if this rule holds? If this is our original scale factor, what are we expecting here? I think we're expecting 9 over 4, I hope. Let's see. If I go new area, 
divided by original area. Does 72 over 32 reduce to 9 over 4? Well, if you divide the top and bottom by 8, it does. And I've talked about your fraction buttons on your calculators, and you can feel free to use those. Let's learn how to use them. Uh, 3 by 12, which has an area of 36. Now we're doing a 2 to 3 reduction. By the way, how did I know that this was an enlargement and this was a reduction? It was a reduction when your scale factor was, remember? And it was an enlargement when your scale factor was, remember? Smaller than 1, larger than 1. 3 over 2 as a decimal is 1.5. It's bigger than 1. And I don't even really need to go to my calculator, Courtney, because the 3 is bigger than the 2. It's bigger than 1. That's going to be an enlargement. There's going to be a reduction. Um, how will I find out what my new dimensions are? Times by the top, divide by the bottom. It's going to be 3 times 2, 6, divided by 3, 2. By 12 times 2, 24, divided by 3, 8. The new rectangle is going to be 2 by 8. By the way, you guys have clued in. The abbreviation for by is a times sign in X. It comes from construction. Um, area 16. New area divided by old area. I think we're expecting an answer of 4 over 9. Do we get an answer of 4 over 9? Jeremiah nods his head while yawning simultaneously. Good to know you can do two things at once. So B says, compare the linear scale factors to the area scale factors, and it wants us to complete. Area scale factor equals linear scale factor squared. Put a little squared on the bracket there. Take your linear scale factor, square it. Remember the abbreviation for squared is a little two exponent, right? Okay. Now we're going to be getting into decimals and things, and you might want your calculators handy. Although maybe you guys are better at mental math than I think. Means you probably want to face out and face up and get them out. That's yeah, that's what I was getting at. Okay. Maggie has scanned an eight by ten photograph to her computer. What shapes are all photographs? Rectangles. They're not going to count. Let's assume any photograph, unless they say different. It's a rectangle. Okay. Well, I have a printer. I need a circuit. No, we'll just keep rectangle. We'll keep it simple. She would like to increase the size by 44%. I would underline that. If she wants to increase the area by 44%, what does she want the new area to become? What's the original area as a percentage? This is tricky, by the way. Tricky enough that for the first time this year, Jordan, I'm using cheat notes. I did this lesson ahead of time to make sure I got all the right answers. Normally I can wing it. Okay. Put your pencils down for a second. A lot of people will go like this. Don't write this down. This is incorrect. They'll go, oh, 44%. And it wants the uh, linear scale factor. Oh, the linear scale factor is going to be 44%. That's 0.44 as a decimal. The linear scale factor is going to be the square root of 0.44. And, but you get this yucky ant. I don't think that's right. I have a feeling they meant this to work out evenly. The area scale factor... is 144%. Write that down. Why is it 144%? Not 44%. Yeah. She wants the original plus 44%. And what's the original? 100%. Right? The original of anything is 100%. The original size plus 44 percent. That's a bit of a tricky concept. Now, if the area scale factor 
is 144%. Mr. Duick, can we abbreviate area scale factor as ASF? Yes. Can we abbreviate linear scale factor as LSF? Yes. I'll figure it out. What's the linear scale factor? Now we're going backwards. We're saying if you know this, what's this? How would you go backwards? What's the opposite of squaring? I heard what? Square rooting. The linear scale factor is going to be the square root of now 144 percent is 1.44 as a decimal. Remember your percents to fractions and decimals? What's that? What do you get? What's the square root of 101.44? Ah, 1.2, which is 120% yes 20% increase on the on the length and the width a 20% increase on the length and the width 120% scale factor gave us a 44% increase in the area and now that's a bit trickier because when i see the number 20 the next number that leaps to mind is not 44 it says explain why these scale factors are different. Well, they're li one's linear, one's area. We already know this. I'm not going to fill that out. We just filled the whole chart noticing that scale factors for linear scale factors and scale factors for area scale factors aren't the same. They're squares of each other or going in the other direction. They're the square root, square root of each other. It says determine the dimensions of the enlarged photograph. I want to find 120% of 8, and I want to find 120% of 12, because it was 8 by 12 originally. Sorry, 10. 8 by 10 originally. I scrolled down, didn't I? 8 by 10 originally. How do I find a percent of a number? Hint number one. Look up. Sydney, what word is that? Say it nice and loud. Times. Almost always, 99% of the time in math, in anywhere. If you see the word of, hit a times on your calculator and you're fine. So it's going to be times eight. Except I can't do math with 120%. What is 120% as a decimal that I can do math with? It's going to be 1.2 times 8, which is? Okay, the new photograph, if I want the area to be 44% larger, the new photograph is going to be 9.6 by of means times 120% is 1.2. 12. The new photograph is going to be 9.6 centimeters by 12 centimeters. That gives you a 44% increase. And yes, Joe, it, it, it's ramped itself up a bit in difficulty because I don't see those numbers appearing anywhere in there. I realize that. D says blah, 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 forget it. E. Okay. Maggie must also produce a print whose area will be reduced. I would probably underline the word reduced by 25%. If you're losing 25%, how much is left? 
What percent? 75. That's going to be our scale factor for area. Our area scale factor, our area scale factor, is that okay if we abbreviate it that way? We're good? Is 75%, or as a decimal, 0.75. What's our linear scale factor? If we know the area scale factor, how do we go backwards? And this one won't work out evenly, by the way. How do we go backwards? What do we do? Square root. The linear scale factor is going to be the square root of 0.75, or the square root of 75%. And since they want to the nearest hundredth of an inch, give it to me to three decimal places. We'll carry an extra decimal place just to be safe. What do you get when you go square root of 0.75? Point seven five. Sorry? 0 0.660? I don't think so. I think it's going to be a bigger number. I think that's wrong too. That sounds better. I, I'm pretty sure square root of 0.75, square root, not squared, square root of 0.75 is 0 0.8660. Did you, is that what you said? Okay, because you said 660, and I was going, no, I, I'm sure there was an 8 in there somewhere. 0 0.8660. Or 86.60 percent, whichever way you want to think about it, brother. This wants the dimensions of the print. You guys stay on this page. I'm going to turn back one page. Once we have the linear scale factor, 1.2 as a decimal or that, how did we find the dimensions? What did we do with that linear scale factor? Jordan, what did we do? Times it. Okay. So it was originally 8 by 10. The new dimensions are going to be 8 times 0 0.8660 and 10 times 0 0.8660. What do you get? 8 times... 6.93 and 8.66 centimeters, centimeters. If you're finding this a bit tricky, this is a bit tricky. Maps. Last one. Yeah, last example. Example two. Marco, who is the owner of Mapit Incorporated, has produced a map of Canada with his employees. So the area of the province of Alberta is approximately 661,850 kilometers squared, or square kilometers. By the way, can you see another easy way to remember that area is the square of the linear scale factor? What do you notice, Joe? I know, you were elsewhere. That's why I'm getting your attention. Staring right at me and creeping me out to be quite honest. But that's okay. Ready? Here's the question. Can you spot another easy way to remember that area scale factor is the square of linear scale factor? Look up, look up, look up, look up, look up. What do you notice on the units? Yeah, more specific. What do you notice on each of those units? Ah, would that maybe help you remember that area is the squared? Really? Well, that's very convenient. So, in real life, Alberta is this. The linear scale, uh, sorry, the, on Marco's map, the area is that. 
the linear scale factor can be written in the form of 1 to x. Calculate the value of x. Okay. The area scale factor on the map is is what? Well, real life is 661,850 square kilometers. On the map, it's 264.74 square kilometers. So do we want to write map first or, or actual area first? Let's go actual area. divided by map area. You okay there? Sure. What's the area scale factor here? Please pull out your calculators and type. Sorry? 2,500? The map is 2,500 times bigger than, okay. That's the area scale factor. You know what? Let's put ASF, area scale factor. Is he right? Is it 2,500? Somebody else get that too? Yeah. Not? Okay. If that's the area scale factor, what's the linear scale factor? How do we go backwards and find the linear scale factor? It's either squaring or square rooting. Which one? Square rooting. Okay. So the linear scale factor is going to be the square root of 2,500. I think this will work out evenly. Will it not? Will it not? Yeah. 50? Yes. The linear scale factor, the map is 50 times bigger. So if they want us to write it as 1 colon x, we would write this. 1, and on the map it was centimeters, colon 50 kilometers. Because on real life it was kilometers. Alex, is that okay? Vaguely, kind of. Okay. We found the area scale factor by going new area divided by old area. Got that. Found the linear by, oh, well, if we know the linear, we square it to find the area. If we know the area scale factor, we square root it to find the linear. That's where that came from. And I said, okay, that's the, uh, this, is, this is the map, because I put the map on top, the map on top. So this is the map, 50. What was the map measured in? Sorry, I said map. This is the real life. This is the real life. I put the real life on top. The real life is 50 kilometers for every on the map one centimeter. So on the same map, the area of the province of BC is represented as that big. Find the actual area in real life. This is area. Joe, you know how I know? Square area. Yep. It's dumb, but it works for me. And they want the actual area. I'll call that x. The actual area divided by the map area equals the actual area divided by the map area. There's our conversion factor right there, is it not? And I think everything's lined up properly, actual to actual, map to map. What do you get? Oh, <clears throat> how do I solve this? Cross multiply. Have I mentioned lately that that cross multiply thing that you learn in grade 8 is one of the most useful skills you'll learn? Because it is. I have no idea what the answer is. 
Are we bigger than Alberta or smaller than Alberta? We are. By quite a bit. Almost a full third. 94209 to the nearest what? 100 square kilometers. Uh, 942100 kilometers squared, or square kilometers is how we usually pronounce it. You need to practice this and wrap your brain around it. I don't think this lesson was constructed particularly well, but here's what I'm going to say you should try. I think number two is totally fair game. Yeah, I skipped number one. I think number three is good. I think number four is good. Five is good. I'll go six A. Meh. Meh. Eight is good. There you go. 